Let's bow our heads. Gracious Father, we thank you, God, for this beautiful day that you have given us. And, Lord, we thank you especially for your word because your word is a light and a lamp. Your word gives direction in a dark world. Your word gives hope, God, where our heads are bowed down. You are the lifter of our head. God, we pray that you would bless our teacher on this morning with good health. Bless her, God, with clarity of thought, with succinctness, God, in her speech. We ask that you would make our hearts fertile through your Holy Spirit to receive your word without daft, without, without doubting, without wrath, God, without allowing the enemy to come in and steal that which you have planted. And as always, we will give your name the praise, and we pray it in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We thank the Lord for just the blessing of uh, an extra hour. My mom looks a little like she in jail. Some of y'all ain't never been to jail. Y'all don't know what that look like. <laughs> Talking through that glass. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I start shouting right now. I'm not talking through a glass this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for our teacher, and without further ado, I give you our teacher. Amen. Say amen for you. God bless you this morning. <laughs> praise the Lord. It's a good day, isn't it? Amen. Amen. I praise God. Amen. The songwriter said he did it for me. How many of you can testify to that? Amen. I want you to know something. If it was done, he did it. Amen. Amen. So we give him the glory and we give him the praise this morning for just being who he is. God is just all right, I tell you. Uh, I just thank him for all that he is doing in my life and how he's keeping, uh, just keeping me. I just appreciate him. Uh, <laughs> just thank God for just being God. It's good to see uh, our Mississippi family this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, I've been missing you all, so I'm glad that you all are here today. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the study of the word. Uh, we thank God for the book of uh, Exodus. Exodus. We are in Exodus, and we are here. Oh, we've been trekking along, and we made it up to here. Amen. God has called Moses, and God called him to use as the mouthpiece to deliver his people from Egypt. His people in Egypt in bondage. They were being burdened by the taskmaster, Sister Stephanie, and we know what that feels like sometimes. Anybody that has a job, you know what it feels like to be burdened, don't you? Amen. And sometimes you unduly burden. A lot of times uh, on the jobs that we have, especially when we have people over us, sometimes it seems like they give us, they set us up to fail. They give us a, a tasks that seem to be impossible. And we're going to see today that that's what Pharaoh did in his uh, indignation at Moses coming to him to tell him what thus saith the Lord. And so um, we thank God that God heard the cry of his people. I praise God that he continues to hear the cry of his people, Amen. that our cries don't fall on deaf ears. On, the Bible says that he's the God of Israel and he doesn't sleep, nor does he slumber. And I praise God. That means that whenever you call on him, whatever you need, Christy, you can call on him over in Mississippi. And while I'm calling on him over here in Arkansas, he'll come to see about both of us. Don't you praise God for that? Amen. That's what the songwriter said when, when, when he is an on-time God. All right. He's an on-time God. Amen? Amen? Praise God for that this morning. And so we were uh, talking about the call of Moses. Go to Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus, the third chapter. And as we talk about Moses, Moses being now, he was born in a Hebrew's house. Born in a Hebrew's house, but raised up in Pharaoh's house. Raised up in Pharaoh's house. And so Moses uh, identified as he began to grow and he began to see the plight of his people, he began to identify with the plight of his people. That's why we thank God for people who are, are like Martin Luther King, who can identify with the plight of the people. That's right. you, need, you need someone who's going to look down and say, our people need help. 
sometimes when we look around today, we, we kind of feel uh, disenfranchised because it doesn't seem like we have the leaders that we used to have because people are looking around and they're just saying, well, you know, I got mine, you need to get yours. But we need someone who can identify with the plight of the people and that's why it behooves us. When we began to pray, to pray for leaders who will come and have wisdom to lead. Readers, leaders who will come to have wisdom to lead. And so he was born in Hebrew's house, raised in Pharaoh's house, but he always knew who he was. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget where you came from. Amen. And so you need to look back and say, Lord, I remember. I remember. And then you said, Lord, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Because you've been so good to me. And so he knew where he'd come from because, remember now, God had fixed his soul that his mother raised him. And so his mother raised him. Uh, he knew that there was a difference in the gods that they were serving over in Egypt as opposed to the one and only God uh, of the Israelites. And so he understood that, and so he did step outside of himself, you know, stepped outside of his calling at that time. And so it's funny to me that when God actually called him to do what he had to do, that he drew back. But now you stepped up, you ready to defend your people. But when God called you, you stepped back and said, I can't do it, I can't do it. And so God, God called him out of a bush. Look at uh, uh, Matthew. Look at Exodus, the third chapter. I'm back at Wednesday night. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Exodus, the third chapter. And so what Moses saw, Moses saw, Moses saw in Exodus, the third chapter, in the first verse, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush because Moses now, Moses has been on the backside of this mountain for some time now. So it was not unusual for him to see a bush. But this sight was a sight to see because she saw this bush engulfed in flames and he said, I'm gonna turn aside to see because what he saw was the bush was burning but it wouldn't burn up. Look at God. And so he saw a bush that had been turned into a miracle. And then what he heard was God speaking to him with authority and with assurance. And then what Moses did, Moses began to argue with God and say, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. How many of us have done that? How many of us have argued with God and said, I'm not ready? God, you just go and find somebody else. But do you know that God knows what he's doing? God knows what he's doing. And so when Moses, Moses, Moses began to go back and forth with God, back and forth with God, he said, I'm a nobody, I'm a nobody. God said, I know who you are because I made you. You don't have to tell me about your inadequacies, your insufficiencies. You don't have to tell me about that because I know everything about you. And I want you to know this morning, he knows everything about you as well. And sometimes we try to hide some of the things that we have. I know our last Sunday, uh, or Sunday before last, I can't remember, I put on a dress. And, you know, women, sometimes we put on a dress and sometimes we can show every flaw that we have. I told, I told Pastor Bland, I'm putting on a jacket this morning because I'm trying to hide my imperfections. <laughs> and so sometimes we try to do that from God, with God. We try to hide our imperfections. Well, my God, he wouldn't be God if he didn't know all about you. God knows all about you, and he knows everything that, that you can do and everything that you want to do and everything that you can't do. And so God said, I can take all of that, and I can use you anyway. Amen. I praise God for that. So Moses began to go back and forth with God and said, I'm a nobody, and I don't know who you are. And God said, well, let me just tell you who I am. I am the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And just like I was God with them, I'll be God with you. And just like I was with them, I'll be with you. And just like I led them, I'll lead you. I'm God. Well, then who should I tell them if I go and they ask me, who should I tell them? You tell them I am. 
Oh, I am. I am that I am. Aren't you glad about it this morning? Aren't you glad that Jesus picked up the refrain and said, I am the bread of life. I am the light. I am the way. Oh, oh, I'll be everything that you need me to be. This morning, I'm glad that he is. I always have been. I always will be. I was always able. I'm still able. So you tell them when you go that I am. That's who I am. I'm God. I'm God. And I'm God all by myself. Moses said, I'm not a fluent speaker. And God said, well, you know, I made your mouth. So then I know what you can do. And he began to go back and forth and back and forth with God. And he said, just let somebody else do it. Somebody else can do it better. But the takeaway from this is when God speaks to us, when God speaks to us, what we think about ourselves, Pastor Bland, and what other people think about us is really insignificant. Well, we, we think about ourselves, see, because you're all off into yourself anyway. Say amen for Brother Tyrone coming in. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. No, I really mean that because he's been a little down. And so we just, I'm just glad to see him walk on in. <laughs> walk in on his own two feet. Amen. Amen. So the takeaway is that God knows us. He knows all about us. Don't, don't, you, you don't have to tell him about yourself. You don't have to tell them. You're wasting time. That's precious time. And time, how many of you know when time is used up, it's gone, isn't it? You can't get it back. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking at It's November the 1st today. Can y'all believe that? That's crazy. It's November 1 today. All right, Tasha, whatever you're going to do in the name of Jesus, you need to be trying to do it right now. Because after a while, you're going to look back and say, I wish I had kept going to school. Or I wish I had gone on and done this. And it's going to be too late. Because the time go by, you start moving a little slower. Your thinking gets a little duller. How many of you know I told you I left the keys over there in the, in the <laughs> I left the keys in the door the whole week. Anybody could have come up here and come into church, and it's not, we don't have anything really to speak of, but they could have come in and gotten whatever they wanted to because I, I left the keys in the door on the outside. I didn't, I guess I didn't lock the door. And so, you know, time is moving on. Time is moving on. So we thank God for that. And so don't, don't, don't go back and forth with God because God already knows. And so as God, let's go to Exodus. Let's look at Exodus, the uh, fourth chapter. God is this kind of God. Whatever you can come up with, he can come up with something better. But God is a God of encouragement. Now, he's a God of judgment. Don't get me wrong. He's a God of judgment, but he's also a God of encouragement. And I like that about him. And so he didn't leave Moses out there because he knows our weaknesses, as I said. And so he just gave Moses some encouragement in, um, in uh, Exodus chapter 4. Look at verse 18. Uh, he gave him the encouragement of his father-in-law's blessing because it could have been the other way. You remember when Jacob was with Laban, how Laban, uh, when uh, uh, Jacob was getting ready to leave, it could have gone totally the opposite way. He could have said, well, no, you probably need to stay a little while longer. But Jethro gave him his blessing. In the 18th verse of chapter 4, it says that Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, after he had the encounter with God. And said unto him, let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. And it's always good when someone encourages you to do what God has said. Because, again, I say it could be totally the total opposite way. You could, have, you could be discouraged. People, people are easy to discourage you. What they want to say is, now, are you sure that that was the Lord? Are you, is it the right time? Well, is it ever going to be the right time for us? Is it it's never going to be the right time for us? And so uh, it's always the right time for the Lord. And so God gave him the uh, encouragement of his promises. In verse 19, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses and Midian, And go return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. 
And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my, my son, even my firstborn. And you know that in the culture there, the firstborn had a place of prominence, isn't that right? That they had a place of honor. So uh, uh, God was saying that to, to let them know that what was getting ready to happen, you mess with my firstborn, I'm going to mess with your firstborn. Okay? This is how it's going to end up. This is how it's going to end up. And so he gave him the promise, uh, uh, the promise that he was going to be with him. And then his wife went along. She went along with him, and that could have been the opposite way, too, because sometimes when one, one spouse wants to do something, go one way, the spouse could say, well, go on. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had told Pastor Blam, he's talking about coming down here, go on. <laughs> well, go on. I told him like this, you know what? The next time you tell the Lord or the Lord tells you to go somewhere and do something, he's going to have to tell me too. <laughs> I'm saying that, but you know I love my husband, praise God. You know I'll go. But, but couldn't it be the opposite way? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with you, honey, but it, it has not a thing to do with you, but everything with circumstances. <laughs> you know, they shot in my neighborhood last night. You know what I'm talking about? So it has nothing, has nothing to do with my husband, but everything to do with the environment. <laughs> No, that's for real. They did. And so um, we, 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 we thank God. God. God gave him the encouragement of his brother coming to help him because he said, let, let Aaron do it. And God, was, God, God got angry with him. Well, if you just insist, you know, I'm telling you what I'm going to do for you. But if you just insist, I'll let Aaron do that. I'll let Aaron do that. And then God said, that, let's go and talk to the elders of Israel. Uh, of Israel, the ones who were there in Egypt, and they are going to, they're going to go with you. They're going to go with you. He said, take that rod with you and show them everything that I can do with that rod. And you know, that takes us to the verse over in Corinthians where it says, uh, the Jews require a sign. Yeah. You see how long they've been requiring a sign? Right. Moses said, I know they, they, they're going to have to know that you're with me. Yeah. And so the rod was the sign uh, that they needed to know that God was with him. But how many of you know that even though God is with you and even though you have favor, everyone's not going to be with you? Everyone's not going to be with you. And no, you know, people don't care that God called you. Uh uh. No, they don't care. They don't care that you're on the battlefield for the Lord, they don't care that you're working it out. Mm -mm. They could care less because we are a, a society, we are self-consumed. We're concerned about what, what, what's in it for me, and we are concerned about whatever it is that I want, what can I get out of it, and if you're not doing what I want you to do, you can go on down the road with that. And the quicker we realize that, I believe the better off we'll be. When we understand it, even, you know, even, uh, Lord, let me just whisper this, even our children, they're concerned about what you're doing for me, what you're doing for me. And so we have to, we have to understand that. We have to understand that. And so uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, God sent, God sent him to Pharaoh, but he said, I'm going to harden his heart. And God has a reason to do everything that he does. He does nothing uh, arbitrarily. He does nothing just to be doing it. But he has a purpose for everything that he does. And so he was sent to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh rejected him. Let's look at uh, chapter 5. Are you there? Yes. Chapter 5 said, Then afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, 
let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And this is what Pharaoh said. Why should I obey the Lord? He doesn't mean anything to me because you see there in Egypt, Pharaoh was like a god. And so he was like, you know, you coming to me telling me what God has said, I, don't, I could care less. I could care less. You got to show me something else. And so the Egyptian people considered Pharaoh to be a god. And then why should their king obey a strange God that neither Pharaoh or the Egyptians knew? They didn't know him, but they, they're going to know him, aren't they? They're going to know him. God said, I'm going to show myself mighty, and I'm going to do all of this, hardening his heart, and uh, just to let him see who God really is. Just to let him see that I am God. And not just him, but it was a witness for the people. A witness for the people of Israel to let them see you're serving a mighty God. You're serving the true and living God. Now, you might act like you don't know, but you need to understand. And so he says, and Pharaoh says, who is the Lord? In verse 2. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And then he goes on to say uh, in verse 4, And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? Why should the work stop? Because you see, if the work stopped, that meant that the economy, see the, the Israelites were a boost to the economy. Everything that they were doing, everything that they were doing, they were helping the economy. And that's like free labor. And there's nothing like, unless you're doing pro bono work, you know, you're doing that out of your heart. You're doing pro bono work out of the kindness of your heart. But if you're doing free work because you've been made to do free work, it's something totally different about it. What you say, Pastor? That's slavery. And who wants to be enslaved? Mm -mm. Nobody wants to be enslaved. And so he wasn't about to give up a good thing. I'll go back to Jacob and Laban. Jacob was good to Laban. Jake, Laban's household was blessed because Jacob was there. And so when Jacob got ready to leave, do you think that he wanted him to go? Uh -uh. No, because his house was blessed. And so this is the way that Pharaoh looked at the children of Israel. We're getting all of this free labor. And they're working hard and they're working steady. So we might as well use them while we can. So you got to be out of your mind if you think that we're going to stop them, what they're doing, and allow them to go with you. Lady Deborah, it's just like when you're a member of a church and you know that you're not learning anything, you know that your family is not being blessed by it. But when they try to stop you at the door, or they try to come back and try to get you to come back to the church, they always tell you what they need. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we don't have nobody, or we need you to do this, or we need you to do that. But they, they don't ever try to give you any reason why it would be beneficial to you. Because it's all about them. Mm -hmm. You just need the slave labor. Amen, amen, amen. And so, um, I said, I'm not going to let him go. I'm not going to let him go. As a matter of fact, not only am I not going to let him go, but I'm going to work them a little bit harder because they need to realize who's cracking the whip. They need to realize that I'm the Pharaoh. I'm the head Pharaoh in charge. <laughs> and, and Lady Deborah, the funny thing about it is, and you know, I'm just so grateful for God this morning because what I found out about God is, is that, you know, people are always talking about, I want to get closer to God. I want to get closer to God. What, if, can't get no closer to God, but he, 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 he shed his blood for us, and that brought us in the right standing. But the thing about, I lost my thought. Go mm -mm, ahead. Keep talking, babe. I lost it. Okay. It okay. lost. All it right. come back, I tell you. Okay. All right. Praise God. I, ooh, that happens to me more frequently. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so he said, I'm not going to let him go. I'm going to make that task even harder. So I'm going to have him to make brick without straw. Now, how can you make bricks without straw? 
You got to be a miracle worker. But I know a God who can. Amen. I know a God who can do it. But now he was just being mean. Mm -hmm. Mean for sport, uh, as the maid said on the help. Just mean for sport. Uh, in uh, chapter 5, verse 14, it says, And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick, both yesterday and today as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. But he said, ye are idle, ye are idle, therefore ye say, let us go and do sacrifices to the Lord, because that's what Moses has said. I'm just asking you to let me take them out into the wilderness for a few days, two or three days, three days. Let me take them out for three days. Let's have a feast out there. But he wouldn't even do that. He says, go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you, yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case after it was said, ye shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily task. I, I know what it was, okay, Lady Pastor. Deborah. Okay. God wants us to grow up. Stop being children. And what they use against us is if you won't let us use you, mm. then we're going to isolate. We're not going to be your friend anymore. We're not going to, you know, you may be going to church out here now, and you, you're only a, a mile away from the folks. But they act like they don't even know you no more. You see? But see, part of how they keep even your children down in school is, is that if you don't speak incorrect English, if you don't act up in school the way we act up, then we're going to isolate you. We're going to uh, talk about you. We're not going to, you're not going to be in the in crowd. And so somewhere down the line, I have to grow up and realize that what I have to do is what's best for me. Whether you like me or don't like me, because if you are play the popularity game, if you play this game, you'll never have nothing. Never. You'll never have nothing. Lady Deborah brought a message one time. She said, if you're down with the brothers, that's exactly where you're going to be. You're going to be down with them. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> and so, um, okay, cool. I'm sorry. I was wondering, how long were the Hebrews in slavery? For, what, 400, 400 years? Mm -hmm. The question he asked was, how long were they down there? 430 years. And they actually wasn't there 430 years. It was 430 years from Genesis 17 until the time that they were delivered. It was 400 years, but actually being in Egypt wasn't 400 years. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so in verse uh, 5 and 22, well, chapter 5 and 22, so Moses, Moses had gone to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, no, I'm not letting them go. I'm going to make their tasks even harder. And uh, they began to beat the people. They gave them tasks that were just incredible, just tasks that they could not make or manage. And Moses uh, began to, to, to be, get, get depressed and disappointed distress because God you know now hold it you called me I was out there with the shepherd my with the sheep rather minding my own business and you talking to me out of a bush and you said you were going to be with me but now he's just he's just really he acting up sometimes it seemed like when God has told you to do something rather than it start to go smoother it looks like it began to get a whole lot worse doesn't it how many of you know that sometimes it gets worse before it gets better? But you got to stay the course. You can't give up even when the times look like it's impossible. And the task that God has given you looks like it's an impossible task. You've got to stay right in that place. you got to stay there until God says it's time. And so uh, my Moses went to God and said, are you going to keep your promises to me or not? says in verse 22, And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, 
Wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? Mm -hmm. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Mm -hmm. Neither hath thou delivered thy people at all. But just like I said earlier, God always has a purpose and God always has a plan. Uh, sometimes it can seem like you, it gets so to his not working and you said God and then you know you start saying well did I just think this up myself uh, maybe God didn't you know and then you want to get on that maybe for a streak but then something will happen and the Holy Spirit will let you know no you didn't think this up uh, God told you to do it so stay with it and then everybody you know the ones that you're talking to or something they began to say well you know your auntie died because she was she went crazy doing this and you're going to lose your mind if you don't stop this. But again, you got to say, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I tell you this morning, if you don't know God, you better get to know him. All right, Mother. All right. Not only you going to need him in a dying hour, but I promise you, you're going to need him in a living hour. All right. All right. Because All there right. are some things this pastor always said can come against yes, you. Yes, sir. That uh, the song said, had it not been for the Lord that's yes, on my side this yeah, morning church. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be here. Yeah. No later than a couple of days. I know Satan was trying to take my life. Hallelujah. But I stand today to say God said not so. Not so. Not, not so. so. Not so. Not so. Not so. If my sister said, Lula, get yourself together. And I began to cry out to God. And he saved me from having a wreck right there with Alright. Alright. Then told him my fault. Alright. But God is God. And he said, I work in my own time. Lord. Yes, yes. But your time is not my time. But my time is my time. All right. Rest in the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And, and, and thank you, Mother Nan. Thank you for the encouragement this morning. Because, you know, really, the, what the devil and his minions want us to do is to become weary in well-doing so that we can fall on out. The devil thinks that if, if, if you come up against some roadblocks, if you come up against something that you will just look at it and say, that's too hard. Mm -hmm. But how many of you know if it was easy, everybody, everybody. would be doing it? Everybody would be doing it, but it's not easy. Nobody said just because you're born again, everything's going to go all right and everything's going to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would be saved, sanctified, filled, and baptized with the Holy Ghost. But it's not going to be easy, and it wasn't promised to you. But what was promised to you was, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. No matter what you're going through, I'll be right there. And I'll bring you out with a mighty hand. And when I bring you out, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be right there with you. So don't get weary in well-doing, because your season is coming. Amen. Your season Thank is coming. Thank you, Lord. And so God, when God calls you, when God calls you, and we started this last Sunday, we'll just pick right up where we left off. When God calls you, you're going to have some opposition. That's right. That's true. No matter what it is you're going to do, I don't know why we think if it in the natural, <laughs> there's opposition in the natural. I don't know what makes us think that when God calls us, there's not going to be any opposition yeah, in the spiritual. There's opposition on every hand. That's right. Opposition on every hand. But what are you made out of? You got God working through you. And if God is working through you and if God is with you, he's more than the world against you. And the Bible says then that you're not just conquerors, but you're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You got to understand is you're not standing in this alone, but you're doing it through Christ Jesus and you're doing it in the strength of the Lord. Amen. And so there's going to be some opposition. It's going to come and it's going to be some misunderstandings. But that doesn't mean that God didn't call you. Don't walk away from your calling. Don't abort the mission too soon. That's my next message. Don't abort the mission. Don't abort the mission. You stay on the mission. You stay on the task. You stay focused. Right. Because things are going to come, Mother, just like 
that. And sometimes it comes like just like, like that. that. And it's as if, you know, like a, a snowball, it just, it just turns into something just monstrous. But you stay on task. The Lord, I know you call me. Because God says, you know, you, what he wants you to do is just believe and Amen. just keep moving Amen. forward. Amen. And so there's going to be some opposition. And so I want to take just a little bit of time for an activity this morning. I want you to talk to the people around you. Get up and move around. It's a little stuffy in here. but uh, So I want you to get up and move around so you can wake up. Um, uh, so we're going to have opposition. We're going to have opposition. I want to know, when I was coming along, in the 90s, there was this big, big surge on how to deal with difficult people. How I many of you know you're going to run into some difficult people? Everyone's not going to agree with what you're doing. Everyone's not going to, you know, they're going to try to hold you back. They're going to try to hinder you. You're going to deal with some difficult people. Man, how many of you know that sometimes you are the difficult person? And difficult doesn't always mean that you're, you know, it's an argument or something like that. Sometimes you can just sit there and say, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes you can just be quiet, and sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes you can be critical, and that's difficult. Sometimes you can talk too much, and that's difficult. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I was, <laughs> I was talking to Mother Minnie this morning. I was getting ready to say something, and, and uh, she was trying to say something while I was saying something. She said, well, you know, I just talk. I just talk. And so sometimes you can't get a word out because the other person just talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's difficult. So there are a lot of different scenarios for running to difficult people. And so for about five minutes, I want you to discuss how do you deal with difficult people? What, what do you do to deal with difficult people? Now, and, and then for you to stay saved while you're doing it, how, you, how do you deal with difficult people? So get your group and talk about that for about five minutes. Like Sarah was doing quite a bit of talking. Let's let Sarah go on and talk. Talk it out, Sarah. Testing one, two. Uh -huh. My uh, solution to it was to just step away from it. Yes. You know, because if if you are if they're up here, if both of you are up here, hold this mic for me while I do this. If you all are up here, well, they're up there. There's no, it doesn't make sense for you to go there with them. Somebody got to stay on the lower level because it's got to de-escalate. And one thing about it is, as as we were discussing in the group, it's not I, it's our group. Is that it's best to let it resolve itself. And you got to be in Christ. And when, you, when it resolves itself, you go back to your brother. And uh, <laughs> like I was saying, every personality is different. Everybody handles things differently. But the thing about it is if you're in Christ, when you go back to reapproach it, you're going to reapproach it in the correct manner. Because this is your brother, and you are your brother's uh, sister's keeper. That's what the word of God says. You just cannot just leave them hanging out there. You got to go back and get it right because that's going to be something you're going to be held accountable for if you don't get it right. You know, let's go back to the saying where it's saying it's, it's not how uh, they treat you, but it's how you treat them. All that's, right. That's what's important. All right. So, 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 so to de-escalate or to deal with them, you're saying just if they're up here, you just you can't go up there with them. I will give you a scripture for that. The scripture for that is Proverbs, the 26th chapter and the fourth verse. And I'm just going to read it in your hearing. It says, answer not a fool according to his folly. All right. All right. That's right. Lest thou also be like unto him. Yes. Yes. So isn't that the word of God? Amen. It's not a scripture, but a song. Zero to a hundred. Real quick. <laughs> real quick. Because, you know, I know some people that go zero to a hundred real quick. And if everybody going real quick. You got a disaster on your hand. All right, take it right there to Mother Helen, and then I want you to go over to the Davises and give it to them. And we got two sets of Davises in the house today, so uh, I want you to take it over here to this group. I, I was just thinking about one time I had one of my, when I was doing foster care, one of the, the, the mothers came by, and she was telling, she was upset with me, and she was telling me about what she got, she get a lawyer, and she can do this, and she can do that and blah, blah, and I go, okay, I can get a lawyer too. And I, Jeannie was over to the house. Jeannie said, don't go down to her level. 
You know, and that made me think. I was acting just like the mama, you know. <laughs> so she said, don't go down to that level. And, and, and then I just, just hushed my mouth, zipped it up, and left it alone. Thank God for Jean. Amen. <laughs> That was a good day. Because if it had been any other day, you would have been having to tell Gene, don't go down the other level. <laughs> you talk about zero to 100 <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's 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 share over here on this side. I believe Tara was this a group? Uh, Tara, the okay, uh, okay. Let's 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 go over here to this group. Who's the spokesperson? Come on, brother. <laughs> what, we, what we were saying was that if you the first thing you don't want to do, you do not want to argue with these people. You don't want to do that. And you, if you say anything to them, you try to, to encourage them and, um, sh and try to make sure you show them kindness, as much kindness as you, as you can. And if that don't work, when they leave and out of your presence, you just pray for them. Okay. Okay. And, and what's the scripture for that? The scripture for that is, as much as life within you, uh -huh. live peaceably with all men. As much as life within you. Sometimes the best thing to live peaceably if, is not to be around that person. See, what, what we do is we want to keep running after trouble. You know the people difficult, but you study up under them. You all in their face. And sometimes we the one that escalate the situation. All right, okay, let's, let's just go to this group right here. What we came up with is uh, sometimes it's just best to be quiet and let this person to keep from es escalating the problem worse than what it was. You, be, be, you just be quiet and let them have they say. And then once they run out of whatever they trying to say, then that's time maybe you can step in and correct them. Amen. You know. So you okay. No, I just said to Marilyn. Maybe you just need to be quiet because it takes two to argue. And Marilyn says she, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go over here. And then we're, oh, this a group back here, uh, Lisa's group. <laughs> Come on, Brother Ty. I'm going I'm to just make it simple. Yeah, I'm going to just make it simple. Most folks like that, you feed them with a long hound spoon. Okay. That's it. You, you, you just have to quit dealing with them. Okay. Okay. And, and finally. And, and I kind of agree with Tyrone. You didn't ask me, but that's, that's my thing is. Y'all talking about talk to them and whatever and everything. I ain't no better than they are. And if they want to act a fool, I want to act a fool too. So, so I, you know, all that, them scriptures and all that, that ain't in my mind when you act no fool with me. Lex, the best thing for me to do is leave you alone and walk off. I promise you, you'll get what you're looking for. So I'm just amazed at how many problems leaving solves. But That's if I truth, stay Pastor. there, That's the truth. sooner That's the or truth. later, what? Because they're going to say something that I'm going to go, what? <laughs> and sometimes, uh, you know, you know, I don't know, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes it seemed like, uh, Brother Wade, you had to give them what they asking for. In order for them to know, uh, I never should have said that. Oh, Jesus, come on. I was going to say with the difficult people, sometimes they're difficult people that we have to deal with because of our job. Yes. 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 So to me, if that person is not relevant, not really important, I can just cut them off. But if it's somebody that I have to deal with on the you job or even in your home, you know, well, you know, your home, you can talk about it, work it out. But sometimes in your job, you have to deal with, you can't really talk to them. But I keep it short and simple. Keep it short and simple, get to the point and move on. If it's somebody I have to deal with on my job, but if they're not relevant to me, somebody I really don't have to deal with, I just cut them off. You know, Vandal thank Jr., you. Uh, we, thank you, Sister Stephanie. Vandal Jr. told us the other day, you know, the way they deal with me a lot of times. And sometimes when you're dealing with, <laughs> that's true, that's true. Sometimes when you're dealing with difficult people, Jeremy Van you said, what you just do is say, oh, uh-huh. Okay. 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 <laughs> 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 a 
Okay. You got peace right. in the house. Uh huh. You're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right here, and we're gonna end with these comments. And dealing with difficult people, a lot of times uh, you are. Uh, we had a difficult situation the other day, and it was a childish thing to me, and it was all over some ice cream. And I'm just looking, <laughs> honest, I mean, I'm talking about with old people. And I'm just saying, I cannot believe because we ran out of one kind. And the person said, I don't want that. I said, I want that. I don't want that. Well, I had got my little piece and laid it down. But I see him just getting totally out of hand. And I'm saying, all of us old folks act like this. And it's a, so I just finally started to solve it. I just picked mine up. The lady wanted what kind I had. And I said, you can have mine if you want to. And she just took it and said, okay. And went on, just started eating. I told the other lady, I said, well, I just take any of it, you know, just eat. that's okay. Then got to the other lady, I don't want none. <laughs> and I'm saying, I cannot believe all these 60 and 70 and 80 year old people act like this. This is so childish. <laughs> Well, you're helping us because you're letting us know it doesn't matter how old you get. You can still be foolish, can't you? But really, you, you no, know. it's not. It, it really is not. And, and it just while I was sewing on my quilt, it just came to me. Uh, once an adult and twice a child. You know, uh, that's the way uh, Chloe probably Children, would children, Said, that's no, right. No, I don't want that. Yeah. You know, but I'm just amazed. We're all women. How can you act like this? That's yeah, women. yeah. Yeah, okay. so true. Thank you. Still you still a human being. Yeah. You still can be selfish. You yeah, you're still not perfect. Okay, so so Pastor, as we proceed in the week, in this week, as we go through this week, you're going to encounter some difficult people. You're going to encounter some people. One thing I have to always remind myself is that everyone doesn't think like you think. You know, you can't expect for people to think and do like you would. And not saying that everything you think and do is the right thing. But you cannot expect that. So as we encounter, we heard what everyone said and we know what we thought. As we encounter difficult people this week, let's do our best to deal with it prudently. Let's do our best to deal with it wisely. And let's do our best to not be a part of the problem. Not a part of the problem. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise, everybody.